What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Yes, that's right, we're back with another drunk shark science episode, one of my favorite episodes to do here on the channel. For those of you that haven't seen these videos before, I basically have a few beers on camera and rant about something stupid in the shark world. We previously looked at Submarine the Shark and also the Black Demon Shark as well, so if you wanted to watch those, you can click those links up there or stick around to the end screen. When I say drunk shark science as well, I'm not really that drunk. I wouldn't be able to get the camera working if I was that drunk but also saying that it is now what nearly half 12 I've just come back from work where I've had a couple of drinks after work with the darts boys shout out to the darts boys by the way and that's really kind of got me in the mood to do this episode <laughs> so in today's drunk shark science we're going to be having a look at a shark myth known as the Rukin or as some people refer to it the voodoo shark. The Rukin is supposedly a massive bull shark that lives in the bayous of Louisiana that has been terrorizing people for years. And to celebrate today's American shark-based myth, I have managed to find myself some American beers. Well, really it was the only ones that Tesco had on offer, but we've got Bud Light. I know a lot of you Americans are probably gonna be raging at the camera right now, but this is all I could find. I wanted to get some Louisiana-based lager from this crying eagle company or something like that, but the amount of money I would have had to spend to import that beer across to England was extortionate. <laughs> it was this or cause, guys, and realistically, both of those taste like piss, so we're rolling with it. So it's time to strap yourselves in for this beer fueled rant about the voodoo shark. The voodoo shark. The voodoo shark. Right, the Rukin, the voodoo shark. What is it? Where is it? And why are people so terrified of this thing? Supposedly, this is a shark that lives in the Louisiana bayous and the Mississippi River. But this is no ordinary river-based shark. This particular shark is 18 to 20 foot long. <laughs> so if we hedge our bets here, based on the fact that this shark is living in the Louisiana bayous, which are either freshwater, estuarine, or saltwater, it's probably gonna be a bull shark. <laughs> really does taste like piss. So we basically got an 18 to 20 foot bull shark that is terrorizing the local Cajun natives. Don't get me wrong, bull sharks are really impressive predators, but to suggest there's one out there that's nearly 20 foot long is pretty wild. <laughs> Off the top of my head, the largest bull sharks come in somewhere at around 11 or 12 feet long. So 20 feet is like double that size. <laughs> Thinking about 11 to 12 feet though, that's still pretty big and definitely capable of causing some serious damage. <laughs> Looking at the upper end of that scale there of 11 to 12 feet, I'd say it's not impossible that you could get a bull shark that's maybe 13 feet long. But to get to 18 to 20 foot long, you've got to add another five to seven feet, I think if my maths is right, to get to that length, which it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> For the purpose of storytelling though, let's presume that the Rukin is an 18 foot bull shark. Could a bull shark even live in the area that this shark legend is presumed to be in? Well, yeah, it could, technically. Bull sharks have been found well and truly in the Mississippi River, sometimes hundreds and hundreds of miles inland. So to have one mooching around in the bayous of Louisiana is not impossible. Females tend to travel up the rivers and give birth to their young, which is where they spend the first few formative years of their lives. So that means most of the time you're gonna be getting smaller individuals in these bayous. But every now and again, you might just get a pretty big female who decides to rock up to the party and give birth in that river. So we're presuming here that the voodoo shark is a big female bull shark who's kicking about in the bayous of Louisiana, eating people, pets, and boats. It's a pretty nightmarish thought. <laughs> Louisiana, though, is fairly well known for its myths and legends. The idea of spirits, deities, and voodoo is well ingrained into Louisiana culture, and it has been for hundreds and hundreds of years. And they do have a fair few mythical creature legends as well. Things like the Rougarou, which is a beast with the body of a human and the head of a wolf that lurks the Louisiana swamps eating naughty children. Or the Honey Island Swamp Monster that lives in St. Tammany Parish. He's quite a weird one that supposedly descends from an escaped circus chimpanzee who then went on to breed with an alligator, as you do. And then he got all mossy and swampy and became a seven foot tall monster with webbed feet and yellow eyes. So the idea of there being a shark based legend based off all these other cryptids isn't actually that far fetched. 
kind of. But Beerfield Sherlock Holmes Chris is back again, and of course, I had to do a little bit more digging. I'm really not enjoying this. <laughs> And after doing my usual YouTube detective work, I found that the Discovery Channel actually did a program on the Rukin about 10 years ago. People around here call it the Rukin. My Sherlock Holmes senses though tell me that if the Discovery Channel has anything to do with this, something isn't quite right. So the show follows three Louisiana locals on their quest to try and find the Rukin. One of them, this one I think, is called Captain Blimp. Captain Blimp. <laughs> It contains a fair few interview snippets of local fishermen in the area who tell us about the size of the shark and all of them seem to be saying that it's 20 foot long. Some of them say that it's half fish, half swamp monster, so that would be the Rukin breeding with that creature from Honey Island and it all starts getting a bit weird. And then also we get some other short stories about people who say their boat was bumped by a really big fish, blah, blah, blah. But all in all, it looks like a load of rubbish. As per, no one has any actual footage of the Rukin, no names are given from the fishermen that they interview, and then most of the time throughout the reenactions they've got on the show, they're using clips of f***ing tiger sharks and great whites and this thing's supposed to be a bull shark. And we all know that tiger sharks and great whites famously do not live in the bayous of Louisiana. <laughs> Please, Bud Light, even though you taste so awful, get me through this nonsense. So, could the Rukin have been real? Has there really been an 18 foot bull shark terrorizing fishermen in these bayous? Well, there could have been a bull shark in there, that's for sure. Admittedly, not an 18 foot one, but a 12 foot one is easily still capable of killing a few swimmers and bumping some boats. And perhaps at some point down the years, some people might have been killed by bull sharks in this particular area. So I realized pretty quickly, I was gonna have to do some more digging to get to the bottom of this whole voodoo shark rookin myth. I started to scour the internet for any Louisiana folklores that mentioned the Rukin or a voodoo shark. I thought maybe I'd be able to find it in some old articles or a reference to it in a book somewhere. Because if it's attacked people at some point down the years, then there's gotta be some reference to it somewhere. And when I started doing it, it led me to my biggest discovery yet. And that was that the whole thing was completely made up by the Discovery Channel again. <laughs> You little bastard. I'm gonna need another beer for this one. So yeah, that's right. The Discovery Channel did it again. Another fake show to add to their list of already terrible fake shows. <laughs> Weirdly, I actually hadn't heard about this one before. The ones that tend to get the most attention are Megalodon the Monster Shark Lives and that ridiculous mermaid one they did. But during my Sherlock Holmes digging, I couldn't find any information about the Rukin other than what they did in this Discovery Channel show. Scouring the records, there's supposedly only ever been one shark attack in those waters. And that wasn't even in the bayous, it was in a big fat lake called Lake Ponchar Train. I think in that case, a seven year old boy was briefly bitten by a four to five foot bull shark while he was swimming. To be fair, I did also read somewhere that there was a fatal shark attack in that lake over a hundred years ago, but I couldn't find any evidence anywhere to back that up. So what this basically means is that all the people that featured in that Rukin show that they made were all paid actors. I mean, it's pretty easy to tell that these three weirdos were making it all up because they couldn't act. We're finally gonna shed some light on what terrorizes these waters. Captain Blimp, how could you lie to us like this? <laughs> but also I'm remembering that all the people that they interviewed, like the local fishermen, about the Rukin voodoo shark myth, they made it all up as well. <laughs> all of this stuff about them hearing about the voodoo shark passed down from generation to generation, all of it, made up bollocks. Even the name Rukin, it sounds like they took the French word for shark, which is rakin, mashed it up a little bit, and came out with Rukin. <laughs> there is clearly French influence in Louisiana, to be fair, with all these place names like Lake Train. You gotta somewhat give it to them. They were really trying hard to think about ways that they could pull the wool over people's eyes. I'm hoping there's gonna be someone from Louisiana right now watching this Shark Bites episode who might be able to tell me if you have ever heard of the Rukin voodoo shark myth before this ridiculous Discovery Channel documentary. This guy they feature here though, he was pretty on it. He called it for what it was. Straight up. But oh wait, it's about to get a whole lot worse. Not only did the Discovery Channel make the whole thing up, they actually lied to the scientists that they featured on the show. <laughs>
Now, I didn't watch the whole show because I couldn't find anywhere online where it was free for me to watch it. I was never going to pay money to watch that show. <laughs> This is a horrible drink. I'm coming to the realization that Bud Light is, is, is really gross. Like I thought it was gross before, it's got even grosser for me now. <laughs> Supposedly on the show itself, as Captain Blimp and his group of ragtag weirdos were trying to chase the Rookin, they also had at the same time, actual shark scientists researching bull sharks in the area. I think Discovery tried to play it off as Captain Blimp was racing the shark scientists to see who could prove that the Rukin was real first or something stupid like that. But the leader of the science side of the team was a chap called Jonathan Davies, who is an actual bull shark specialist working in the area. Jonathan said that he loved Shark Week growing up as a kid. And when Discovery approached him to make a show about bull sharks, he jumped at the opportunity. He went on to film with the producers of the program, showcasing some of the really cool research that they were doing on bull sharks in Lake Pontchartrain. But it wasn't until the show aired that Jonathan realized something really, really untoward had gone on. Jonathan watched for the first time, along with millions and millions of other people, as clips of him answering questions were stitched over completely different questions. And this made it seem that Jonathan and his team of shark scientists not only believed that the voodoo shark was real, but they were actively out there searching for it. <laughs> Can you imagine how awful that must have been for Jonathan as he's realizing watching this show that he's been completely stitched up and misrepresented entirely? He literally said one of the questions that the producers asked him was, have you ever heard of the voodoo shark? To which he replied in his words, no, I've never heard of it. It sounds like bullshit. But the producer then went on to ask him about the existence of large bull sharks in Lake Ponchar Train, which Jonathan Jonathan replied, yeah, it's possible. And then they literally cut that answer and stitched it in to make it seem like he was answering the first question about the voodoo shark. <laughs> I can't believe they've done this. Jonathan did try to get in touch with the Discovery Channel after the show aired, but they just completely ignored his emails. And when other various reporters tried to get in touch with the Discovery Channel to ask them specifically about what had happened here, they just deflected and said that Shark Week has been responsible for furthering shark research and that's a good thing. Oh, I can, I can feel my blood starting to boil here. <laughs> to top it all off though, lying to scientists on their shows isn't just a one-off for the Discovery Channel. Shark scientist Christine Stump was swindled by the Discovery Channel into making a show about a mythical hammerhead shark called Old Hitler. And Christine thought that she was actually filming with them to showcase her actual research on hammerheads. <laughs> Admittedly, I haven't heard of any recent tales of shark scientists who have worked with Shark Week and been lied to, so maybe the leopard has finally changed its spots. So there we go. That looks to be the mystery of the Rukin shark solved. Not that you needed me to do that for you. I got Bud Light repeating on me now. I think most of you, if you were watching that show the year that it aired, would have probably called bullshit very, very quickly. But I'm glad I could hit that final nail into the coffin right here on YouTube for you. Sadly, I still reckon there's going to be a few people who stumble onto YouTube and find those Discovery Rukin videos there because they've got loads and loads of views and end up believing it to be real. So this is where we need all of you guys to come in. Let's make sure that this Shark Bites episode about the Rukin sits right up there with the Discovery Channel ones. And that way we can expose this utter nonsense for what it is. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed watching me struggle to drink some piss flavored beer on camera again. And also maybe enjoyed my beer fueled rant about the Discovery Channel. <laughs> if you have heard of any other shark myths or legends that you want me to cover in these Drunk Shark Science episodes, then make sure you let me know in the comments. And also if you like these Drunk Shark Science episodes and you want to see some more of them, make sure you stick around to the end screen where you're going to be able to watch me go on multiple beer fueled rants about Submarine the Shark and the Black Demon Shark. They are of course just as ridiculous. But for now, how do my outros go again? Give the video a like if you've liked it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below. Something, something, something. See you next time. It's something like that, right? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to bed. Bye.